Hey, this is Tony Ross for TonyTeach.com. And I wanted to let you guys know about the next uh, set of premium tutorials we're doing for Toon Boom. And it's called, it's all about the camera. And basically on this, we're not really doing animation, but we're taking several uh, movies, everything from Westerns to a couple of sci-fi and even a few animations. Um, and we're taking a look at some of the scenes and then showing exactly how to set those up uh, using Toon Boom products, using either Toon Boom Animate uh, or Animate Pro as well as Toon Boom Studio. So I want to start by showing uh, this is a clip from Once Upon a Time in the West, just this, this little short uh, image here. And one of my favorite directors, Sergio Leone, uh, basically, he was a master at doing some really awesome depth of field shots. So taking a look at this here, you've got these two guys in the foreground, um, just a little bit further back than you've got these henchmen and a little bit further back there's... Uh, the house and further back there's a mountain so uh, what I did or pretty much was uh, I wanted to just kind of do this scene real quick and say okay well how can you push this and how would you make this uh, in Toon Boom so I'm going to jump over to Toon Boom Animate and this image here is uh, a quick sketch thanks to my good friend and illustrator Chris Cartledge giving a little shout out there um, the problem with working in Toon Boom, especially if you come from working in a program, let's say like Adobe Flash, um, if you're used to working in Flash, you're looking at this little rectangle here and you think of it as the stage. Well, in Toon Boom products, it's not the stage, it's the camera. It's And because it is the camera, you can do a lot more as far as where the image goes. You're not restricted here. so. Um, kind of the stage in, in Flash, like this is kind of locked down. Well, this is a camera, so it's not locked down. So you can do a lot of different movement with it. All right, so with building out a scene like this, the first thing you would do, and um, the advice I give to anyone who's working on something, do you have to draw out things and then scale them back and all of that? Well, no. Uh, what I basically told Chris to do, I said, uh, well, Create this, recreate the scene, but this is what I want you to do. Draw the sky, all right? And then you draw what's in front of the sky on the, ne on the next layer. So I'm just gonna actually turn these layers off for a moment so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So the sky is drawn out, and technically I would have probably done the, the clouds on a different layer, but again, we're not animating here. I'm just showing you how you would set up uh, this camera shot. So then you bring in the mountains. And if you notice, we're, we're not just stopping the drawing right at the edge here. We're keeping them, keeping everything very wide. Then you're bringing in the ground here and bringing in the house. There is a fence in front of the house. I think that's just an empty layer there. Uh, so you've got the three guys, then the man on the left, and then you have the man on the right. And I think in the movie this was Henry Fonda and there's Charles Bronson over here, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so once you've done that, uh, the way, the reason I instructed him to do that is because everything at least lines up exactly the way you want it to be. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and extend our play here and just kind of extend the exposure and select all the layers here on frame 60 and let's do F5. And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to click and look at my top view. Now the whole thing is, I'm going to make sure nothing that's selected. Um, if you don't have the top view, just go to uh, windows and come down and look at top and that's where you'll have the pop-up but when you look at the top view you see each of the layers there's the sky there are the mountains there is the little dirt and land there's the house the fence 
and you've got all those different layers represented right here and of course this is working in animate so I'm gonna see exactly how this is set up now what I want to do for this scene I'm going to go ahead and add a camera so I'm gonna click add camera and then I want to give a peg to this camera so I'll add a peg and make sure my animate button is turned off but what I want to show you at this point uh, I'm going to use my advanced animation tools and if you don't see these simply go to windows toolbars advanced animation and that's where you'll find it so I want to click on the translate tool and right now if I click and move up or down everything looks pretty much the same here now the reason is uh, when you draw out everything initially everything is like in the same exact plane so look at the top view here this line going across is each of these layers and it's at the exact same z plane here so it's at the same z depth but what I want to do is start to rebuild this in the top view the way it should be laid out so the first thing I'm going to come down here and I'm going to extend the view of the top view a little bit here. I'm just going to click down. And the first thing I'll do is click on the sky. And instead of using the translate tool, because um, if I actually just moved it back with the translate, um, everything would start getting smaller. I'm going to undo that, Command Z. I want to use the maintain size tool. And that way I can click and move the sky back. But if you notice the view over here, nothing has changed because it's actually maintaining the size. Okay, so the sky is pushed pretty far back and I'll select the mountains and I'll push those not as far back as the sky, but pretty far. And I'll select the dirt, and that little land there. Okay, and now I'll select the house and that's going to come up a lot closer. So again, I'm kind of eyeballing and thinking, okay, well, where exactly would the house be? And we have the fence. It's right in front of the house. And we have our three gentlemen. We'll move those back a bit. And we have our gentleman on the left, so we're going to move him forward a little bit. And the gentleman on the right, move him forward a little bit. Okay, so now if we look at the image, again, nothing looks like it's moved, and that's because we're using the uh, little maintain size here. And what I want to do now is take our camera view. And now if I click and move this up, there's a little bit of a difference um, in the way things are multi-planed out. Now, to even push this further, I'm going to turn on my camera mask so you can see exactly um, what the final result would be. So if we pan this down, it's kind of a little multi-plane action happening there. Okay, so we have that, and what I want to do now is we'll drop in a keyframe. Let's do F6, and we'll turn on our animate, and I'm going to pull back a little bit for this first shot. Now, one thing that um, Sergio Leone was uh, pretty famous for, he'll either start a shot really low or pretty high so if we could maybe even start the shot where we're focusing on let's see their hands or something and see okay we haven't actually drawn out the full thing so we'll just stop maybe about right here okay um 
And so maybe we'll start the shot at about maybe 10 frames in or so. Um, we'll start the camera to pan up. Okay, so it's panning up. And then the next shot. Uh, we're going to actually start pushing in a little bit. So I'm going to go over here to the top view. And I'll push this straight forward. And next, let's go a little bit further. Um, we can start doing things like definitely push beyond our characters there. But let's also move this off to the side so we're not going to run into our three people. So now, if I actually just play this. Now, all of this is set up pretty fast right now. But once I have my shots the way I want them to be, let's move this all the way to the end here. So you have the option of doing a lot more uh, movement and a lot more play with things. And maybe, maybe you're thinking, hey, you know what, in the beginning, let's start all the way from the top. Just the uh, sky view here. So you can set everything up. And then last but not least, I'm going to turn on uh, the control so you can see exactly where the path is. So the camera selects this. I'm going to do Command and then F11. And so you can see where the path is. And you can start altering that path if you want it. Okay, and perhaps maybe we'd be looking a little more at the house at the end here. But yeah, if notice that just even this pan that I'm doing, um, how the characters look in front of the, the house and everything. So you can do some pretty dramatic shots um, because we've set up all of this in the very beginning. It looks like I had part of the part of someone's hat there. So let's move this forward a little bit. So it's past that. So yeah, just little shots like that. So my main thing is what I'm doing with this is uh, studying different uh, tricks that were done and the first one um, again it's from once upon a time in the west but the shot we're going to be doing is actually a 37 second shot um, and we're going to be breaking that down as well as breaking down some of the scenes from the matrix the fifth element uh, and also possibly things like 2001. If you have other suggestions, uh, get those in because we'll be releasing uh, this in about a week and we'll keep you posted. So this has been Tony Ross for TonyTeach.com. Remember, keep it simple. Make it perfect. If you don't have time to make it perfect, rethink the idea.
Hey, this is Tony Ross, and thanks for watching our tutorial. I wanted to talk to you more about our upcoming title, It's All About the Camera, where we're going to show you how to set up several scenes from some movies and some series, um, how to set them up using Toon Boom's cameras. We're going to be showing you in Toon Boom Animate as well as Studio. So we're going to look at uh, the movie Once Upon a Time in the West, uh, also a shot from The Matrix, uh, Batman the Animated Series, Lord of the Rings, The Animatrix, and a few more. So click below to pre-order our new title and you can get it now for $25. Once it releases, it will be $45. So remember, keep it simple. Make it perfect. If you don't have time to make it perfect, rethink the idea. Have a good one.